All right, before I, uh, can you hear me? Is this thing on? Okay. Um, all right, so before I get started, um, this is kind of a beginner kind of level talk, so if you've developed plugins before, you've kind of done this, you're probably not gonna get a whole ton out of it, but you're welcome to stay um, if, if you want. Um, but I wouldn't be offended if you were to duck out either. Um, so a little bit about me, they, they talked a little bit. Um, I do have 14 plugins on WordPress.org. I've contributed to WordPress core, so if your website is uh, updated to 4.9 or higher, which it probably should be, um, my code is already on your site. Um, but my background is not as a developer a, in software development or anything like that. Um, I have a de degree in accounting, I was a soldier, uh, I taught myself how to code, and I guess the reason why I'm saying all that is because if you don't have that background, uh, development background or whatever, you can do it too. You, you can learn, I don't have any special superpowers that taught me how to do this. All right, so what is a plugin? Um, plugins are really just um, software that makes, that changes how WordPress works. Um, it, it's, they're usually written in PHP code, um, but other code can be used too, like JavaScript and, and uh, other, other languages can be used too. Um, plugins make it easy to add new features to your site. Out of the box, WordPress doesn't really have all the features that you might need. So for example, like contact forms and your page builders or e-commerce or SEO type stuff, uh, WordPress doesn't have all that stuff necessarily baked into it. Um, a myth, uh, kind of, that uh, uh, plugins will slow down your site. Um, plugins aren't inherently bad or slow for, for having on your site. Um, it's not, not a bad thing to have a plugin. Um, however, some tech support uh, type people have perpetuated this myth by saying that, oh, you just have too many plugins when there's, a, there's something wrong with your site. Um, I kind of feel that it's sort of a lazy way of saying that there's there's a lot of plugins on your site, and we don't really want to look through each one individually, and so just start taking some of them off, and hopefully one of them magically fixes things uh, for you. Um, some of the plugins that are out there actually will speed up your site. Um, there's caching plugins, there's plugins that will optimize images and stuff like that, so they're not inherently bad. They won't inherently slow down your site. Um, however, badly coded plugins can slow down your site and, and could cause some issues. I also want to make sure everyone's kind of on the same page with what a theme is versus what a plugin is. Um, themes are kind of, think of a, a car. So themes are kind of like the exterior of your car. Um, the color of the car, the shape, the, the type of car, whether it's convertible or an SUV or a minivan or something like that. Um, so themes control the look of your site, uh, what everything kind of looks like. Um, and it manages the appearance of the site's the site's header, the footer, the sidebars, the, the, all the content area, stuff like that. On the other hand, plugins are, if we're using that car analogy, plugins are um, the interior part of the car. Uh, your, your engine, your GPS system, if uh, it has heated seats, things like that. Um, plugins control the functionality, how the, how the site works, what it does. Um, while themes control the placement of the different content on, on the site, plugins will create, could have the ability to create uh, new types of content or modify the existing content. Um, think about products like in an e-commerce store, for example. That wouldn't exist necessarily on a default WordPress site uh, without a plugin to, to add it there. Um, so plugins basically will add features that don't come with WordPress. So why might your site need a plugin? Um, a plain install of, of WordPress uh, can be pretty limited. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's 100% all you need if you're, you're gonna run a simple kind of website, maybe a basic business brochure style website, or uh, if you wanna start a blog or something like that. You don't need any plugins to do any of those types of things. Um, but the power of WordPress is in its extendability, how, how flexible it can be. Um, and it's really simple to add plugins for SEO, uh, e-commerce, contact forms, um, uh, connecting to third-party services, and about 54,000 other things that are available on WordPress.org. Um, or you can even code your own plugin, as we're gonna talk about a little bit later. So 
a lot of times people will want to do something on their site, they want to change how something works or add some functionality, and, and so they'll go, they'll do a Google search, and they'll find a uh, bit of code online that says, uh, copy this code and put it into your, your themes functions.php. And that's fine, it'll work, um, it's, it's functional. But there are some dangers to doing that, adding stuff to your functions.php, uh, which can be alleviated by having a, your own custom plugin. So, um, and, and actually sometimes the functions.php file is the appropriate place for some of this code, but it's not always. Um, so for example, if you have theme updates, um, if you added some code to your themes functions.php file um, and your theme gets an update, when that theme gets updated, all of that, that custom code that you added in is gonna get wiped out. It's gonna be replaced, they're gonna take, so your existing functions.php file will be on your server and then the new theme update will come in and just put a new version of that in. It'll completely lose whatever you had. Um, one way to fix that is to have a child theme. Um, if you're not familiar with what a child theme is, you can, you can look it up. I'm not gonna go into what that is right now, but uh, just real quickly, it's a, basically a, almost a clone of the existing theme that you have, and it just is a place for you to make your changes and it'll never get updated so that the, those changes won't go away. That's a good place to put some of the code, um, but there's another problem with that. Let's say you go and make a couple changes to your code and then you decide, um, you know what, a year from now, I, I don't wanna use the same theme anymore. I wanna change it. So you go and you find a new theme, looks all nice and pretty, you put it in, and then you're like, well, what happened to all that custom functionality that I had? Maybe it was adding a new, uh, new something to your site. Well, it's gonna be gone because you've taken off uh, the old theme that had your custom code and now you're using a different theme and it's gonna be gone. Um, that's, that, it might be okay if it's doing, if the custom code is doing something that's specific to your theme, that maybe it's changing how the header looks or the sidebar, or it's doing something that's specific to your theme, that might be just fine. Um, however, it's, if it's some sort of functionality that you want to continue on your site for forever, you probably should end up putting it in a, a custom plugin. And so that's kind of what we're gonna talk a little bit about today, is how to do that. So benefit of having a custom plugin is that the code that you put in is not gonna be, like we talked about, it's not gonna be lost with a theme update or changing themes or anything like that. You're free to, to do that. You're free to change your theme whenever you want. Um, I also think it's easier to troubleshoot issues that you might have in in the plugin, uh, maybe there's some conflicts with the code or whatever, it's easier to troubleshoot this stuff because it's just as easy as clicking deactivate in the back end of your site and all of that custom code is not gonna be run on your site anymore. And, and so if you click deactivate and all of a sudden that problem that you're having goes away, well now you can probably pinpoint the problem to be, be somewhere in that, that custom plugin that you've written. Um, uh, for example, if a, a short code is gonna add some content to your page um, and that page is starting to act funny or it has some errors on it, uh, when, when that, only when that short code is in it, you know that that short code plugin has something that's messed up going on it. So you can either fix it or just d disable it for the time being uh, until you figure out what's going on. Um, there are some popular contact form plugins that are out there and the, uh, or a lot of different plugins that are out there that have um, they don't bake all the functionality that they could possibly have into one single plugin. Um, and the nice thing about that is you don't have all this extra code running on your site, but also if there's ever a problem with uh, one of the specific functions that one of their add-on plugins uh, put on your site, it's pretty easy to troubleshoot that. You just deactivate it and then, then you can kind of figure out that, yeah, okay, that pl plugin was causing this problem. Um, and so with that code separated into the multiple pl different plugins, it, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to, to troubleshoot the issue. Um, so what, now let's say you've, you've gone around and um, you've, you've decided, okay, I, I wanna put my, my code into some custom plugin. How do I do that? All right, so things that you're gonna need are, first thing you're gonna need is some sort of text editor. Um, any, any plain text editor will work. You don't wanna use something like Microsoft Word or a um, word processing uh, type, type program. Um, those just won't work. Um, 
Built-in text editors on like a Windows or a Mac uh, computer will, will work, but um, they're, they're also not really built for this specific purpose. Um, there's free and open source options available. I have on, uh, on the slide here um, that, that are, are just fine to use. Um, there's also other paid um, and non-open source options that are available. Personally, I use Sublime Text. Um, I'm not gonna get into the details of the benefits of one over another. Um, any decent one, though, is gonna have some sort of code highlighting that will help you troubleshoot the errors um, as you're writing them, whether you forgot to close a parenthesis or you forgot to add a semicolon or you know, some other something in your code might have gone wrong, that code highlighting will kind of show you the, those errors as you go through. Um, it's also good to, if you're doing stuff on a uh, remote server, it's good to have like an FTP program where you can log into that, that remote server to upload your changes uh, to, to the uh, server. Um, I say that because sometimes you can use, in, in WordPress there is a editor uh, where you can edit the, the plugin's files. Uh, I don't recommend doing that because if you do make a mistake and then you click save, you could cause the whole site to just be a white screen and then you have no real way to go back and change, make, revert those changes back to what it was. If you're using an FTP program, you can save uh, the original copy of your uh, plugin file somewhere on your computer. Go ahead and make your changes, upload it to the, the server, and if you see that there's problems with it, you have a backup of it, you can re-upload that, and it's gonna kinda al alleviate any of those problems really quickly. Um, uh, but definitely make sure you, you have some sort of backup of whatever it is that you're working on, uh, whether it's uh, just copying the file onto your computer, or if you have a, a you know, GitHub or something like that, you can, you can use to um, back up this stuff, and you can revert those changes pretty easily. Um, also, I know I was saying use an FTP account to upload files to your server, um, but use a development site um, of some sort. Um, this will prevent your live site from crashing uh, if something goes wrong, if you add some code that doesn't quite work out uh, on your site. Um, it, like I said before, if you're editing PHP and you miss like one comma or a quote or a semicolon or something like that, it can just bring the whole site down. Uh, many, many web hosts, and um, a lot of them will have some sort of uh, staging or development environment where you can basically take a exact copy of your, your live website and, and they'll, they'll copy that over. Then you can go and make whatever changes you want and it's not going to affect your live site right away. You go and make those changes and uh, once when you're happy with it, everything's working the way you want it, then you can copy those changes back over to your live site and and it's not going to hurt anything on, on the live site. Um, if your host doesn't have that and you don't want to switch to a host that does have it, um, you can uh, in, install a uh, server locally on your computer. There's a ton of options out there. Um, I won't get into all of the, the different options that, they, that there are out there, um, but there are a bunch out there. We can talk about it later. Um, or another option is to just get a, a cheap hosting account that you, you want to um, use for a few dollars a month um, to, to kind of copy your existing site over onto that site, and then you can make changes there. And again, that won't affect your live site necessarily. Okay, so uh, best practices. When you're uh, developing a plugin or, or doing anything with the code on your site, a good thing to do is in your, um, the WP config file uh, in your site's root directory, um, there's a line that, that looks kind of like the, up, up there, uh, define WP underscore debug, um, and by default it'll say false, uh, comma false. Um, if you set that to true, it'll allow any errors that are gonna pop up to show up on your, uh, on your site as you're, you're going along and developing. So that, that can help you identify problems before they, they pop up. Um, so it's a good thing to set that to true. Um, I don't suggest using that on a live site, though, only on your development environment. Um, the reason why is if there are any errors, whether it's from your plugin or some other plugin that you're using on your site, uh, causing some sort of errors, um, it could identify these uh, security vulnerabilities to other, you know, whether it's a, someone who wants to maybe do something bad on your site. Um, so that, that could be a, a a bad thing to have. So set that to false on your live site, true on your development site. Um, 
follow WordPress uh, coding standards. Um, there's two links here, the codex.wordpress.org and developer.wordpress.org uh, have a ton of information on how to code kind of the WordPress way. There's a bunch of built-in functions so that way you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel on how to, how to do certain checks or how to get certain information from the, from the database. Um, so if you're using their functions, things are going to go a, a whole lot smoother. Um, and uh, finally, use, use prefixes. Um, if you, in your code, and we'll, we'll get to the code in a little bit, um, in your code, if you prefix your, your functions in all of your, any of the variables and things like that, um, it, it will help prevent conflicts with other plugins. So if you were to give your, your plugin, uh, a function in your plugin, a generic name, like add shortcode, for example, um, well, that, that function is already being used someplace else. That's already used in WordPress, and it's going to cause big, big errors all over the place. Um, but if you put it, if you add a uh, unique prefix to your, your function, um, that'll help uh, eliminate any of those errors. So you can, you can put your, your plugin name or an abbreviation of your plugin name as a prefix, and then whatever it is that you want, chances are no one else is using that, and it's not going to cause that, those con conflicts uh, between your function and somebody else's function. Um, all right, so we're going to kind of go through a, a, a custom plugin that I, I've made for this, this purpose to kind of use as a demonstration example here. Um, and so what this plugin is going to do, it's, it's going to create custom post types. And I have a link to um, the documentation on, on custom post types there. Um, and it'll also create a shortcode. And uh, again, another link to uh, the documentation on shortcodes. Um, so custom post types, um, before I, I go any further, if you're un unfamiliar with what a custom post type is, uh, WordPress comes with five default custom post types. They're post, page, attachment, revision, and menu. Um, custom post types will handle specific types of content that you don't necessarily want to mix in with the rest of your content. Uh, for example, an e-commerce site might have a products custom post type. Uh, an education-based uh, website might have like an assignments custom post type. M movie review sites might have like a movies and actors as two separate custom post types. Um, so think about it this way. A, a post is a default post type. That's going to be on any site no matter what. Um, and that's where your blog posts are going to show up. But not all content is a blog post, and you don't necessarily want all that content to show up in the same place. Um, you wouldn't want your blog post to show up every time you upload an image, and, um, because images are uh, an attachment post type. Um, just like you want, wouldn't want every product to show up on your blog feed every time you added a new product to your e-commerce site. And short codes, if you're unfamiliar with short codes, they're a way to provide a, uh, a way to dynamically insert content in, into your site. Um, so by placing this little short code, um, your site can run a function that will insert a certain information into the site. Um, you can't put PHP code into the post or page editor uh, for security reasons, but you can put a short code in there. And so that short code can then go and run PHP code on its own. Um, and it can pull data from your, your site's database, or it can even add uh, data from another site using their, their API or, or things like that. All right, so uh, if you are following along, I see a lot of people have their laptops out and stuff. I, I have a, uh, actually if you can move the, uh, the picture in picture for the link here. Um, I have a link here to the plugin that I coded for this, so you can kind of follow along on, on GitHub if you, if you have that. Um, you can download it too, and you can mess around with it, you can make changes, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, so that, that's out there for you to, to grab. Um, so every plugin should have a few things. Um, a first thing is in your plugins directory, you should have a folder for your plugin, uh, all the files that go into your, your plugin. Technically, it's not needed. Um, but it's very useful for organizing uh, all your plugins files, especially if there's going to be more than one file. Um, your plugin should also have a PHP file with a header comment, and I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. Um, but in the header comment, uh, it has 
at a minimum, it should have a, a, a plugin name. Uh, and that name should be unique. Another plugin on your site, uh, or sorry, not on your site, but another plugin on, on like WordPress.org, if it has the same name, for example, if you called your plugin WooCommerce, and obviously there's another WooCommerce that's uh, on WordPress.org, if their version number is higher than whatever your version number is, you're gonna get that update prompt on your site, and when you click update on, on your version of WooCommerce, it's gonna just replace it with the real WooCommerce, and, and that's just something that should be avoided. So give your, your plugin a unique name. Um, your, your plugin uh, header comment can also optionally contain a few other things, uh, a URL, so like uh, to the home page of your plugin if, if you don't, um, uh, if you have a, a place to put that. Um, uh, description is a short uh, description that shows on the plugins page in your WordPress admin. Uh, version number, um, the author's name, a link to the author's website, uh, and, and if, if these things are like a custom plugin that you're not gonna be distributing out anywhere, you probably don't need a lot of this stuff, um, you know, license uh, information and, and stuff like that, you probably don't need too much if you are uh, only gonna use this on your own website. All right, so let me get out of here and, and pull up. Oops, where'd that go? Okay, so this is the uh, my plugins uh, file, the, the main plugin file. Um, See if I can make this a little bit bigger. Can, can you read this or should I make it bigger? I'll make it a little bigger. All right. So, okay, so my, um, this is my, my WordPress site. So it has our WP content, our plugins uh, directory. Uh, and then I have my plugins folder right here, the uh, WordCamp Phoenix 2018 uh, folder here. And under that, I have a whole bunch of uh, different files here. Um, our main plugin file is the WordCamp Phoenix 2018.php. Um, and so the header comment is really, okay, um, really the, the main uh, thing that, that is actually required. Um, if I was to delete everything else out of here, um, this still would technically be a functioning, functioning plugin and it still could work. Um, oops, let me go. Over to here. So right now you'll see WordCamp Phoenix 2018 plugin demo create, creates a custom post type and short code and all that other information. If I was to get rid of all of this and save it and then refresh, so it would still technically be able to be activated and everything like that. It wouldn't do much, it just puts an extra line there. Um, so it's very useful to have all this other information. Um, so all of this down here um, basically pulls in all of our custom code that we want to use. So in this pl plugin, I'm, I'm adding a uh, custom post type, which has a whole bunch of different stuff in here. Um, in the, the code itself, I added a bunch of comments. So if you're, if you're looking at it on your own, um, you'll be able to kind of follow along what it's doing. Um, but this code basically creates the, the custom post type by using the WordPress uh, built-in function. Oops, you can't see, there it is. Uh, register post type. Um, so it'll create the post type sports product. Um, and in this case, what we're trying to do is, oops, I'm not sure. What we're trying to do is create a, a way to add products to our, our WordPress site that will show up on the bottom of, of our um, our pretend sports blog for this, this um, demonstration. Um, so I'm gonna activate that plugin. And I have, so you can see now I have my new custom post type sport products. And that's what I showed over here in the code that creates this, this uh, custom post type. So I go over to sports products. I already added a few because I don't wanna have to um, have you guys go through all that stuff. Um, but basically all it does is it creates a way for are us to call a, a product name and then add a link to our, um, our product. And 
the benefit of that is so that now I can create a, oops, a short code. And again, I have a bunch of comments in here, so if you're following along, you can read all about it. But this, the short code will basically allow me to say, I want to show all of the sports products in a certain category, so golf or yoga or baseball or whatever it happens to be. So if I'm on my posts, so I have a just a generic golf post here. And I have this uh, short code. So this tells me I'm using this the short code that you can't see apparently. Hang on. There we go. All right, so I have this short code down here for sports products. And what it does is it creates a, uh, an attribute called golf, because I have a golf post that I'm writing here. Um, what that will do, the way the short code is written, is it's going to look through all of the, the post types that are the sports product that I had already created. And it's going to look for, and it's going to try to do a match on anything that was categorized as a uh, as a, the the sport that I specify in the short code, and when it does, when if it finds anything, what it's going to do is it's going to add this little section of code to the bottom of our post or wherever I put the short code. And so, in this case, if I go and view my post, You'll see we have our, our golf post here with all of our information, and then it lists out all the products that I, I tagged as a golf-related uh, golf product. And you could do that for any, any number of different um, categories. So if you have, like I said, yoga or baseball or uh, football or soccer or whatever, you can, you can continue to build onto that without really having to add any extra code. Um, and the nice thing about that is, um, it's almost a set it and forget it kind of thing once when you have all this kind of set up. Um, let's see. How, how am I doing on time? Okay, so still got a few minutes. All right, so I have one other thing here that I wanted to show. Um, and I know I didn't, I didn't really get into the code too much, and it's it's kind of hard to really dive into all of the code right now, and, and your custom plugin isn't going to do what my custom plugin is doing. Your, your custom plugin is going to do the thing that you need it to do. Um, one thing I need to, to also make sure you guys are aware of is any PHP file that you're going to have. Um, so basically, it ends in uh, .php, like, like these, all these files up here have. They're all going to start with this code that's up here. The, you're going to open open it with this PHP code. When you go to other websites that have code examples, you might want to, might be tempted to copy and paste that into your site. Um, so for example, um, I have one of my own examples here, and I'm just going to copy this whole entire code example. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it into uh, my plugin file. It's not going to do exactly what I want it to do. It's actually going to break everything. And it's kind of for demonstration purposes. So if I go and add that, <coughs> excuse me, um, if I go and add this code 100% the way it was on this site, and I save it, I'm going to come back to uh, this site here. And you see, I got a whole bunch of errors. Um, that's obviously a problem, but the reason why there's an error is because I included this, this opening PHP code again without closing it first. So if I was to close it first and then do other stuff and then I want to open it back up again, that, that would work just fine. And if I go back to my site and refresh, the site will work just fine. It won't have all those errors. So as you're going along online and you're finding um, Custom, custom code that might do the thing that you want it to do. Just be sure that you're, you're careful about where you're pasting your code, um, where you're copying and pasting it into in your, in your custom plugin. Um, make sure that you don't include the um, that opening PHP 
uh, line if it's already included and not closed. So it's kind of, kind of a uh, matching thing. So you have to, you don't necessarily have to close it ever. Like, so if I was to um, delete all of this and go that, I, I have it opened at the top, but I don't have it closed and that's okay. I don't have to close it. But if I'm going to add in another new opening one, it has to have the, the first one that opened has to have a closing one. And that goes for a lot of things in, in PHP code. Um, I'd highly recommend uh, checking out PHP tutorials if you're gonna get into this. Um, you know, there's, there's classes, on, online classes, there's books, there's, uh, there's probably college classes and, and things at a community college and things like that that you might, might be able to learn from. Um, so especially if you're finding yourself running into a lot of errors, you, you might wanna figure out wh what you're really supposed to be doing with all of that code. Um, that's just a common thing that I've seen happen a lot where people have copied and pasted stuff into their code and they just didn't realize that the closing, um, or the opening and closing of those PHP uh, tags was an issue. But the same thing goes for, like I have an opening curly bracket and I have a cl closing one here. If I was to delete that and save um, and then refresh my page, we're gonna have more errors. So a lot of times it's just, uh, troubleshooting, where did I forget to add the closing whatever? Uh, it could be a parenthesis, it could be the curly bracket or whatever. Um, even could be something as simple as a, um, as a quote like that, um, and we'll still have errors, you know? So as you're going through and coding your custom plugin, make sure that you um, are, are testing it on a development site, so that way, if you do have those errors like I was showing before, like this, if you have errors like that, obviously your live site, especially if it's the site that you use to run your business, um, you obviously don't want your customers coming and, and seeing uh, that kind of error. So do it on a development site, make those, you're going to make errors, I do it all the time. I, I have this, I look at this and I, I try to figure out what I did wrong. Um, but I don't want that to happen on my live site. I think that's about all the time I have. Um, and if there's any questions, I don't think we have time for questions here, um, but I'll, I'll go head over to the happiness bar, which is out kind of uh, over in the lobby area. Uh, if anyone has questions, I'll hang out there for a little while and we can, we can chat then. <laughs>